All right, I'm going to jump right in. This is a video um, in regards to the Rosemont Police Files um, as it relates to Kanika Jenkins. So the first thing that you notice about the files is that most of the files were released on October um, 20th. This is also the day that they um, declared to the public that the case was officially closed. There's only one file in here that was updated on December 15th. And so those are the files that um, I've mostly been checking out. First thing that you're going to notice when you get in this file is that on November 29th, 2017, the Facebook Live video was sent to Target Forensic Services and they even have the tracking FedEx number. And they're um, awaiting further analysis. So. This right here alone, this document is proof that the case is in fact um, not closed, not even close to being closed. They're still waiting for um, analysis. Okay, another thing I want to show you, um, there's a detective. Um, oh, okay, that's not this. This one um, is in regards to the cameras on the ninth floor. So. Uh, Kanika's mom said several times that there was cameras on the ninth floor of the hotel outside of the elevator and near the freezers and um, right here you can see Lieutenant Mewich uh, and I which is Detective Dilla E. Kova followed up at Crown Plaza on October 21st okay they checked for the surveillance cameras with negative results all right so that means that Kanika um, was found on, I guess, like the 9th or whatever of September. And they didn't get around to checking these cameras um, until the 21st of October. So that's about 40 days later, four zero days later, they checked for these cameras, which I think is really sloppy. Um, another thing I want to point out is there's a Sergeant Thomas Dulas. And he met with um, people that were at the party on September 28th, 2017. He completed his interviews. He didn't enter this into their system until October 25th. This is a full month after his in-person interview. And also, this is um, five days after they declared the case was closed. He was entering his reports in the computer. So when everybody was going through these files, these reports weren't in here. <clears throat> these reports weren't in here. These interviews weren't in here. All this wasn't in here. Okay? So this is report number 40. This is Sergeant Thomas Dulas. He did this on September 28th. He didn't enter it till October 25th. Report number 139, he did it again. He met with somebody on September 28th, didn't enter it until October 25th. Okay, report number 138, he did it again. Same sergeant, same dates. Talked to the person on September 28th, he didn't enter it till October 25th. This same sergeant, public safety detective Tom Dulas, was promoted to sergeant on November 22nd. Okay, this guy, who can't enter his reports in on time, who entered his... Uh, eyewitness testimony in a full month after he actually did it he got promoted <clears throat> okay um, something else I noticed of interest um, this document looks funny the alignment and, and spacing everything looks funny to me there's one line that goes down the center here which is normal for printers or fax machines whatever it goes all the way down this is page two there's no line okay there's no line here these aren't the same documents um, I believe page two was copy and pasted here I can see a little bit of a line right here and then it just kind of disappears this looks a little bit slanted this looks like it's going from here kind of downward slightly and um, that one makes me think that it's copied and pasted also, the text. Look at these words. Look how slim and trim these are. Look how thick these words are. Look at this word, hurdles. Look how thick the font is. Look 
how thin this font is right here. Okay? This is not the same document. It's supposed to be page one of two, and this is supposed to be page two of two. It's not the same document. This is a good example. This is the same document. This is this is a two-pager. It also has the line going down, right? You can see this light, light gray line. This is like a printer line, okay? And it's going down the same, uh, the same on the second page. See this line, okay? Look at this font. Look at this. This font up here. This font down here. It's the same. You see, page one and page two. It's the same. It's the same thing. This one? No. It's not the same. Look at this. Look at these words. Look at this word. Look at this line. There's no line on this page. Okay? So that's all I want to talk about today. I have more coming soon, um, but I just wanted to um, just point out some inconsistencies that I've seen in the Rosemont case files and also let people know, keep going. Don't stop. Um, the case is not over. Not even close to being over. There's a lot of... Um, <clears throat> A lot of um, things that I've noticed that were sent away to, um, what is this department called? Target Forensics that um, didn't come back. Um, they requested quite a few phones, etc. So um, the case is not closed. There is some fishy stuff going on. Um, how much we could trust these files, I don't know. You know, when they, when they do stuff like this, I don't know. You know, I don't know, but um, I'm going to keep at it. I have more to tell you, but I just want to do this quick video just to kind of give you um, just like my first initial thoughts um, going through this new case file. Um, I will be back. Bye.